Hey people, and welcome to this Final Fantasy XIV Palace of the Dead Scholar solo thing I thought I'd try out. Uh, the Palace of the Dead is a brand new piece of content that they just added uh, last week, uh, exactly a week ago from uh, right now actually. It's currently Monday night. Uh, actually the servers go up on maintenance in less than an hour, so I want to get going here and get into it. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to reset my pal uh, my progress here. Uh, we're going to be going in as a, as a solo scholar, and I think... Which slot was it? That, all right, slot one is the one that I want to get rid of here. Um, so yeah, we're going to be going entering in this place alone. What this place is, it's kind of like a roguelite sort of level where you uh, pretty much uh, can travel through these randomized floors. And at the end of it, you know, uh, the, the enemies get harder and all that stuff. So you want to uh, usually go in with four people, but I'm going to be going in alone. I know it's possible because I've seen some other people do it. But I'm pretty excited to see how it's all going to work out, uh, especially since you start this at level one and you have to work your way up. You have to work your way up all the way to level 60 inside this dungeon. So uh, we're going to try the uh, first uh, 10 floors today, and then next week we'll do the uh, the next 10 floors, and so on until we hit floor 50. So uh, the first thing to notice is that you got like uh, this menu up here. Uh, this menu is the, uh, like you can see that my arm, my ether pool arm is plus 28 and stuff. So that's because I've been in here a couple times. And we have no items. It's very classic. You know, it's like the blue menu and stuff. So these treasure coffers that you, uh, find here, uh, we just got a pullmander of strength. Uh, so basically that'll increase our damage dealt and HP recovered be healing, uh, by 30% uh, for as long as we have the item, uh, used. And that lasts for about like four minutes. Yeah, and that lasts for about like four minutes. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, use that only when uh, you have uh, the need to. Um, but yeah, it uh, shouldn't be too bad. Like you don't really need to use it early on in these floors. Maybe just uh, use them if like uh, like you have no other choice whatsoever. But uh, for now, I think we're gonna be okay. We just gotta be careful here since I am level one and I have no way of healing myself uh, just as of yet. Not until level four. Uh, we want to be very careful. There can also be landmines. Uh, there can be landmines around uh, along the floor here, so we need to be very careful that I don't step in them. Uh, so it's actually best uh, what to do when you're in combat to just not move at all, because if you move around while you're in combat, you could step on one. I'm okay here because I'm actually in a hallway. Oh boy, we got another Ziz behind me already. That's not good. So let's uh, get out of here. And this is actually level three Ziz, and I'm level two, so it shouldn't be too bad. But uh, the other one that w I was fighting, that like j it just gave to me right away, was like a level. I want to say it was a level six. Uh, so I almost, I got pretty close to dying there. But uh, we should be okay. Uh, and right now, I only have two skills. I have uh, bio and ruin. And once I get level four, I'll get physic, which is the cure for scholar. So uh, all right, now that we're in this room, it's good to like hug the walls if you're gonna be moving around because the landmines and other traps can uh, be lying anywhere, and we ca we actually can't see them. Unless you, we use a certain pomander item, so and since you don't have any of those items, you want to be very, very careful because they can one-shot you uh, if you're not careful. Let's see what one is in here. All right, so that's uh, that's a silver chest. What the silver chests do is uh, they will increase your uh, your arm and your uh, your armor here. Uh, but since I'm level three and this is uh, this is yellowed out, that means it actually can't increase until my level is double this level. So. Uh, level 28, it has to be double of 28 to actually uh, gain anymore. So it's not actually worth it to open them for me. But if you were like just entering in here for the first time, then that would be a different. Uh, that would be a different case. So we need to be a little bit careful with how we're uh, dealing this. All right, we have a palace antelope here. Uh, this actually should get me to level four. I love the music here. It's so Kingdom Heartsy. It actually kind of reminds me of uh, the demo in Final Fantasy 15, the platinum demo. It, it sort of screams that. Just that that dream sequence that Noctis has. There we go. And that palace antelope is dead, and that should level us up right here. Yeah. All right, so now we uh, unlocked Physic, which is our uh, main healing spell, and Summon. So Summon as a Scholar is really useful. If you don't know how Scholar works uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, uh, you play with a fairy usually. And you have two fairies. You have Aos and you have Selene. And Aos is a very regenerative fairy that'll like help uh, give you regens and make your heals more powerful. And then Selene, the other fairy, which you don't actually have yet, uh, is more about making your own attack stronger. So uh, they'll like uh, increase your speed. It can silence enemies for you and stuff like that. And you just put Aos to sleep. That's not a big deal though. Uh, but then the best thing about Aos and Selene is they can both uh, they can both heal for you. So you can just focus on DPSing as a scholar and not really worry too much about keeping yourself alive while you have Aos out there to protect you. Uh, Aos can die, so you want to be careful that the enemies don't start attacking 
her because um, the heals that she'll cast will draw aggro. So you have to be a little bit careful, but uh, we're doing okay. So uh, that puts us at level 5. Um, since we're in these early floors, it's good to kill whatever you see, especially in a solo. Uh, like, I haven't even cleared the solo entirely yet, so I can't really say uh, if this is even going to be possible. It's, it's possible I might fail. I don't think I'll fail. I think I'll be able to pull it off. But, um... Oh, see, I just stepped in a the trap there, so now I'm silenced and, and pacified for the next 30 seconds. So I definitely want to move a little bit more carefully here. Aos is also, uh, has the same problem. Once you have Selene later, you can actually use a skill that Selene has to, uh, heal that off of you. Uh, I think you have to be level 20 for that, though, so we won't be getting to that. We'll, we'll definitely get to level 20 in this video, but it, it'll be a little while before we can, uh, actually make use of her skills. Probably the next tier. Um... So, yeah, if I use that Pomander of Safety here, that could actually remove all the traps on the floor. But since we're already basically done with this floor, see, that's the uh, the teleporter right there. Uh, it's best just to uh, be careful moving through it and kill what you see and uh, save it for later. Save it for the later floors, totally. Um, and what you want to do, definitely, is let the enemies come to you in this area. You want to be very careful uh, with where you're moving and make sure that you don't accidentally step on a trap here. And enemies do respawn the more you move, too. Uh, I think, uh, from what I can gather, the enemy respawn rate is based on how many steps you take. I'm not actually sure if that's absolutely true, but uh, that's what it seems to uh, appear, because I've run around here before and I've seen more enemies respawn versus when I just sort of stand still. Okay, so we got Ether Flow. That's our next skill. I guess it doesn't. It can't hurt to like give like a short uh, Scholar tutorial as I'm going through this. So what Etherflow does is, it's a skill, I have it somewhere, yeah, it's right here. Uh, it gives you back 20% of your MP. So it's a, oh, I got hit by that trap again. Oh yeah, it'll give you back 20% of your MP, which is really, really useful. Uh, and also later it can stack, so you can have up to three Etherflow stacks and get back tons of MP. And uh, you can use those Etherflow stacks to do certain abilities and stuff, which is really awesome. All right, so we have a treasure coffee right here, a treasure coffee. That's what it is. It's a treasure coffee. So that's another Pomander of Strength. I'm gonna keep that. Uh, we don't really need them yet. I like to save those for the later floors. Oh boy, I can't actually attack you. Alright, there we go. The silence fell off. So, let's just throw on those ruins. Once I hit level 10, I have a Cleric Stance from White Mage that I'll be able to cross class up, and that should uh, improve my damage uh, pretty quickly. And I think at level 8, we also get Miasma. Which is another, uh, uh it's, it's another poison. Like, right now, the only poison we have is Bio. Uh, but once we have Miasma, we'll be able to very easily continue on poisoning these enemies or dotting them. So, there's a silver chest here. I'm actually not going to grab that silver chest because I am maxed out here. It doesn't really, uh, behoove me to go and grab it. So, I'm just going to move on here. Um, but yeah, once I become double this level, then it's good. So... I'd say probably in the tier uh, 30 to 40, or actually no, I'm sorry, the 40 to 50 is when I'll start opening those silver chests, but for now, since I'm playing solo, it's not really worth it for me to open them. Uh, definitely if you're playing with a group here, it's good to open them because you might have someone who's not as far along with the weapon development as you, and those silver chests do uh, develop your weapon a little bit, so there we go. I like how my book is all shiny and uh, all glowy. It doesn't really have a texture, but just the glow that it the glow that it emanates is so nice. Especially with the warrior. The warrior axe looks really cool too. I was actually considering uh, going for warrior for this uh, challenge, but I figured scholar is definitely a job that I'm more used to. Um, I don't have warrior fully leveled. I think uh, my warrior is level... Um, yeah, it's only level 30. Whereas my scholar is a uh, good old level 60, so it's not... Uh, like I, I'm definitely way more familiar with how the class works uh, as compared to warrior, which is the only tank I don't have to 60 actually. I should do that sometime soon. Alright, and let's take out that palace death mouse. I can actually go ahead and pull that fire sprite as well and let the uh, poisons dot it down while I am uh, dealing with the death mouse. The death mouse. There we go. Yeah, see, my, my bio does some pretty good work. It, it, took about, it took about like half of the fire sprite's HP as we were just killing the mouse. So, and yeah, Aos just cast Whispering Dawn, which is a regen. And that's a Pomander of Affluence, so if you use that, that'll increase the number of treasure coffers on the next floor. So if I use that right now, when I get to the next floor, there will be more treasure coffers. More coffees. And, um, I, I want to collect as many as I can early on here. And once we get to the next tier, like, this uh, dungeon is split up into tiers of ten floors, we actually lose all our items, so... If you have items by the time you get to floor nine, it's 
worth it to just start using them. If they're good. So there's a Palmander of Fortune. That will uh, increase the chance that enemies will drop treasure coffers. So I'll use that as well. And we should get a, quite a few good treasure coffers here. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, Alright, I want to deal with these enemies first. And I still don't have Miasma yet, so I gotta be a little bit careful. We're on floor 3 now, so... We're actually making pretty good time. Another thing you want to watch out for when you're in here is... Um, uh, the time that you're in here is limited. You only have an hour. And, like, when you're on this first floor tier, it's actually not that hard to, like, finish this in maybe... I don't know, like, maybe 20 minutes or so. But by the time you get to, like, uh, like floors 40 to 50, you're gonna be uh, using the entire hour just to get through here, so you actually have to hurry and make some sacrifices and decide what's worth uh, skipping and what's worth uh, actually completing in here. Um, so it's definitely, it becomes a sort of time attack, and that's with four people, so I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to play out solo, how much I'm going to have to hurry here. Because, you know, Scholar isn't a DPS class, like, it can DPS decently, but, you know, it's still largely a healing, like, it, it is a healer, so... We don't really have that many- oh my gosh, more bats. Like, we don't have that many healing skills right now. Alright, so we have Energy Drain, so when we, uh, use Aether Flow, now we can actually use Energy Drain to deal a huge boost of damage there. Oh, look at those two treasure chests right there, and we have one over there, too. Um, I'm not too worried about dying, we have Aos to heal us. Which is, I think, uh, probably why I think Scholar is the best job to solo this on. I, uh, I know some people were doing it as other classes, like, I, uh, I heard someone was doing it as Dragoon, which is interesting. I don't know how, uh, how, how Dragoon would fare, because they don't really have that many, uh, ways of healing themselves. They have Blood for, uh, not Blood for Blood, they have, uh, I think they can use Bloodbath, which is a warrior skill. I'm not positive, though. See, uh, Dragoon is another class that I'm not very familiar with. I don't play it that much. I think that's actually a level, that's a level 35, yeah. I, that's another one I want to get to 60 at some point soon. There's a Palmander of Witching. I should uh, describe Witching. Witching will turn all the enemies you're fighting into frogs or imps or chickens, and that'll weaken them a lot. So you can pretty much just uh, not worry about dying if you're really struggling with a big group of enemies. I like to save those as well for emergencies only. Alright. And we're just gaining up those levels really quickly. Level 9? Nice. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I'll kill that too. As much as it's probably uh, time efficient to skip some of these, since this is like the first floor, or the first tier, you want to gain as much experience as you can. Uh, so hopefully you can end up being level 20 by the end of this tier. Like when I did this before in the practice run, I ended up I think being level 21. Um, but you want to like pick out the uh, the quick ones as well. Alright, the key is back there. So we can actually probably go ahead and teleport to the next floor. But um, like I said, I do want to make sure that I kill everything that's important. And I think at level... I guess at level 10 we get Miasma. Do we have it? No, we don't actually have Miasma yet. So Miasma will not only throw up another poison on the enemies, but will also do a heavy, which will slow their movement speed. And it also uh, has a cure... Uh, a cure down effect. So basically if they try to cure themselves, they will uh, suffer a weakened cure. Which uh, most enemies don't try to cure themselves, but some do. Like if you're fighting, I think the... Um, uh, there's the boss in the Brave Flox is long stop, for, for instance, which is the uh, level 34 dungeon. And if you let it stand in its, its poison, it'll heal, it'll heal itself. And um, if you had something like Miasma, which we just got there, uh, then it would be very useful. So let's see, we have a sight and something over here. That's a strength. Okay, so we have three strengths. Uh, we can only carry a maximum of three per item here, so... Uh, we have three witching and three strengths. If I get another strength, I'm going to uh, just go ahead and use one. Uh, so, oh yeah, let's cast Miasma on this poor little death mouse. Yeah, so it, yeah, it gets Infirmity. That's the name of the, uh, the buff. And also, now that we're level 10, we can uh, throw up Cleric Stance. And Cleric Stance is awesome. It pretty much uh, switches your mind stat and your intelligence stat. So... Uh, like, how, however good you might be healing normally, now you become that good at dealing damage. And for a healer, that's really, really phenomenal. Uh, to be able to, like, do the same amount of damage as, like, a summoner or a black mage. We got some coil music. That's nice. So, yeah, the music in here is randomized after the third floor. Every three floors, the music will change. Uh, it looks like now we got some, uh, I think it's the second coil area music. So, yeah, we'll throw on a miasma. And a pirate, a palace coblin is definitely going to have some trouble now. 
So yeah, um, one thing I was thinking about, like, you know, the, you know how the AOEs, you can see them? I was wondering if, like, if your player can see them in the lore, that could be, like, a, a way of, like, there is a way of explaining that away in the lore, and I was like, alright, maybe the power of the echo that, uh, your character has allows them to see AOEs, which is a kind of cool, interesting thought, because you never really, uh, you never really get to experience the power of the echo aside from just the buffs that you get when you're, uh, losing to bosses a lot. And also, not being able to be tempered by the primals. Ah, Alright, oh, that's the Karen of Return. So, I should probably explain this as well. Uh, this thing, if you're with a party, and you examine that, it'll bring back any, uh, any ally that's dead. It, especially if you don't have a healer, because it's possible to not queue with a healer into this thing. Uh, it can be very useful to revive enemies. Ooh! I definitely, uh, took a bomb toss there. Alright, that goblin's dead. And then let's grab this treasure here. Alright. Oh, that was a silver chest. Oh, another lost goblin. Yeah, I'm actually uh, kind of interested in, as to why the goblins are in here. I can guess that maybe they uh, went down exploring from that hole, the, the same hole that we went down in, uh, into the Palace of the Dead and the lore here, but I don't know how they would get here first unless they knew another entrance in, which I suppose is possible. Because this is like uh, like it's it's the the Gelmoran ruins are supposed to be sort of labyrinthian, um, but so I mean that that could definitely explain why there's probably more than one entrance into these places because uh, basically the Duskwhite Elizin used these ruins uh, to hide away after they were uh, being discriminated against from the Ishgardians I want to say because Ishgardians uh, the uh, the other Elizin I, I can't remember the name of the the other sub race of Elizin. Um, were sort of casting them aside, and so the Duskwise had to go hide down in the Gilmoran ruins. And basically, they eventually uh, come above ground and form what is known as Gridania, and that's how Gridania is formed by Elizin, and that's why you see uh, primarily a ton of Elizin in Gridania, uh, because uh, they're mostly, um, you know, they, they were founded by, by a, lo a lot of the Elizin who lived in Gilmora at this time. Uh, but at the same time, the, the entire civilization of Gelmora uh, was sort of vanished. Like it, it like a lot of the, um, I guess, cultural consistencies didn't stay the same. But there are some things that are the same. Like you see some symbols that you see in the Gelmoran ruins, like in the um, Tamterra Deepcroft and stuff like that, that you also see in Gridania. And if I see one, I definitely want to point it out. I haven't seen any uh, just yet. I wasn't paying attention too much, but. That's right, let's move on to floor 5 here. Hmm. Take a nice swig of water. Yeah, this uh, second coil music is awesome. Um, I don't I don't think it played in the first coil. Okay, so we have a maximum HP uh, and MP increase, which is awesome. Um, every floor, you have a chance of getting a buff or a debuff. I'm gonna use a... Uh, hmm. I'm gonna actually save these. On the next floor, I'll start using the uh, the sights and the safeties, so we can not worry so much about running into a trap. But I think for now, we're still okay. And since you don't have a tank here, it's good to use a uh, bio to pull, uh, because you can. Uh, it it's an instant cast, and you can sort of get to and get to enemies from far away, and then just like I said, let them come to you. Oh boy! All right, let's uh see. That was a landmine right there, and AO section took some damage too. There you go. And uh, remember, when you're in Cleric Stance, you actually do uh, heal less. Uh, you can turn off your Cleric Stance, but then it's a uh, short cooldown uh, after you turn it back on to turn it off again. So that is something you should keep in mind if you're going to be uh, dancing between Cleric Stance and uh, not being in Cleric Stance a lot. Alright, let's uh, go and kill this uh, Palace Antelope as well, if I can. I'll just throw the Miasma on you. Um, hey, you. Palace Antelope, you wanna see me? There we go. Look at this, just like sticking his butt out at me. Yeah, so I'm just gonna focus on the antelope. The the uh, the hippocurve should die on its own, I think. Yeah, it's about to die. That's the, that's the wonderful thing about Scholar, and once we get Bane, we can put all these dots on uh, one person and then just uh, cast Bane and all those all those poisons spread to everybody that's nearby that enemy, which is really, really good. That's really good for uh, Scholar. And Summoner gets that too. Uh, the downside to summoners, they don't have access to Cleric Stance, so they uh, can't really heal for that much. Which is why I think uh, for soloing, Scholar is still 
uh, Trump's summoner. Not the Donald variety, but, uh, you know, he actually, you know, the, the good kind. As in the card. Yeah, so actually, I think, um... Yeah, I wanna... I definitely wanna, like, go and poison these. I don't, I don't actually, like, uh... Single focusing one enemy here, because I can take the multiple hits from all the different uh, all the different enemies if I'm just careful. I just want to uh, make sure that they're all poisoned, and they're just gonna die on their own. And I can just uh, make sure that their dots stay up. And that one's a level 11, so we have to be a little bit more careful here. But it's not really being that much problem. It's not that problematic at all. Boom! And this should level up us up to 14. There we go. We got a Pomander of Flight. There's our level up there. So we get Enhanced Intelligence. So yeah, uh, once we uh, level up, I think to uh, 15, we get our next skill. I might be wrong. I think the next skill is... Um, hmm. Actually, I don't think... I can check right here. Uh, the next skill that we get is at level... Um, oh, we, we, we learned Virus at level 12. I didn't, know, I didn't even notice. Yeah, we learned Summon too, so we'll be able to Summon Selene at... at uh, 15, which isn't that useful. I'm not going to use Selene that much in this run. Okay, so that's a Pulmander of Strength. I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. Boom, yeah, so our healing potency goes up and so does our damage up, which is great. Uh, the damage up especially, because we don't really need to heal that much here. Oh, we got the Palace Dung Beetle. So one thing you do want to start watching out for on this floor here, especially, I think we are going to start getting the uh, the bees and the bees have this um, this thing called final sting, which can take away 90 or about 80 percent of your health actually, not 90. But uh, you need to be very wary that uh, you're at full health when you take that attack, so you don't have to worry about it too much. And as a scholar, we actually have the skill called virus, which weakens their uh, attack potency. So that's another way to survive it if you're not confident that uh, you're gonna live through it. We haven't actually met a bee yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to run into one on this floor. Oh, this music is so good. I love it. Oh, cool. So there's a, our, uh, there's our Summon 2 and our uh, Palmander of Flight. I'm going to use one of those now, actually. Yeah, that'll decrease the number of enemies on the next floor. And I mean, I guess it's not the best thing to use if you want to experience, but I don't know. I don't care. Let's throw the Miasma on you. The Miasma. Yeah, those poisons, the, the poison that we get actually isn't that dangerous, so I don't even bother healing it. Actually, we don't have the power to heal it yet. Aeos could, uh, cast... Oh, I stepped in the thing again. Aeos could cast, uh, Whispering Dawn, which is a regen for the party, which can sort of counter the, uh, poison a little bit, but, uh, we don't have Leeches, which is the Asuna spell yet, so... We are stuck on that front. So... Hmm. Alright. We have to kill these things, because we, we haven't actually unlocked the key room yet. So, let's, I'm just waiting for my uh, debuffs to fall off here. And I'm just going to open up with an energy drain. Alright, there we go. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah, there's no bees on this floor. Oh, I gotta hurry. Uh, the maintenance is going to be in a half hour. I think we'll probably finish in like the next ten minutes or so, so I'm not too worried about that. Because the I actually find the, the, the later floors are somewhat easier, aside from the enemies that you have to fight, because you have uh, a bigger arsenal of skills that you can have and that you can use. Alright, I'm just going to... Oh, there's a Palace Hornet, I see it. So let's be very careful here. I'm going to kill this uh, Palace Bat first. And, uh... Okay, let's wait for this to die. So yeah, this Palace Hornet... Uh, always start with a Miasma so you can heavy it and it takes longer to get to you. And as soon as you see it start casting Final Sting, you can actually run away from it, but I'm gonna see if I can suffer uh, the damage here. If it's gonna cast it. Yeah, there we go. It's, it started casting, but I killed it before I could finish it off. Uh, so, one big thing that you wanna always make sure you never, never do is fight two of those at the same time. Because it's a guaranteed death sentence. If you do. Oh, I missed the treasure chest. That's okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Mm. Oh, cool! We got the uh, the the level 50 dungeon music. So, all right, there's a coffer over there. I'm gonna run and get it. As a scholar, you don't really have to worry about uh, sprinting because oh, it's another strength one. Take it. 
Yeah, it, because uh, sprinting, you you don't actually use TP as a scholar because you're a mage. All right, here's a hornet. Yeah, I should have uh, cast me asthma first, but that's not a big deal. Just uh, keep throwing those ruins out. Once we get ruin two, it'll be a lot easier because we'll be able to uh, instantly cast. Um, okay, kill that, kill that bee, kill that bee. Yeah, we'll be able to instantly cast ruin once we get ruin two. But for now, we're stuck with regular ruin. So we should be getting pretty close to level 17 soon here. And like I said, I do want to get to level 20, hopefully by the end of this tier. And we're almost done. Like, this first tier isn't actually too bad, I would say. It's once we start getting into, like, probably uh, floor 30 to 40 that this starts becoming an extreme challenge solo because we're going to be we're gonna have to fight off, like, maybe, like, 10 plus enemies on our own and keep ourselves alive and use our fairy to keep ourselves alive. All right, cool. I might actually uh, move on ahead into the next floor. I don't think we really need to go down into the floors below because we have. Oh, I'm I keep casting me out. Well, that's not good. Yeah, throw the ruins up. All right, so level 17. Another strength one, huh? Okay, pick that up. There we go. And we'll just kill uh, the palace beetle, and then we can move up on into. The, uh, the, the eighth floor. And uh, the eighth floor is actually the second to last floor because the tenth floor isn't a traditional randomized floor like, the, like these other floors. It's normally just a boss fight. So we don't have to worry too much about uh, maneuvering or anything. We just gotta make sure that we uh, stay alive. Which can actually be challenging in the later bosses, but for this first one, I don't think it's gonna be that much of a problem. Alright, so we have, uh, oh, that's a Phoenix Down. So yeah, actually, you can use Phoenix Downs in here, and they're a really rare item. I don't think you use them at all in any other point throughout this entire game, uh, or at least you don't have to. Uh, but in, in uh, Final Fantasy XIV's uh, Palace of the Dead, uh, when you don't necessarily have a healer, it's pretty useful to use. Alright, let's, uh, I want to throw these dots. I wish I had Bane. Like, once I get Bane, I think it's at level 30, or, no, it's at level 40 we get Bane. So it's uh, still quite a ways away. Um, then we can just spread our dots and not have to worry about, um, you know, multiple poisoning of, of each and every enemy. But it just goes by so much quicker if you throw up your poison on every other enemy before you start single target attacking. And these crazy hippocurves. Alright, that's dead. And that is, an, oh, that's, was it the same Phoenix down? I wasn't sure. Alright, let's hopefully, actually I'm gonna throw a, uh, Pullmander of Sight. That'll map out the whole floor for us. And also, uh, it'll show us the traps. Like, see that, like, red mark there? That's a trap. So we definitely want to be careful that we don't stand in those. And... Like, we can move around now. As long as we don't stand in that single spot, we should be totally fine. And we'll just throw the Miyazwa onto you. And that Paddleless Beetle should die on its own, so... We're all good. That's why I love Scholar. Scholar's probably, like... As much as I like to main Bard and Machinist in this game, Scholar's probably my secret favorite class. It's, it's such a fun job, because it's like, it, it has so much good utility, it can do everything. Alright, let's uh, there's another trap there, so let's be a little bit careful. And, okay, we're actually almost done with this floor, it's good. And the ninth floor should be extremely easy, I'm actually going to throw up some items once we uh, kill these things here. Oh man, I love seeing crits. Yeah, uh, a big reason why I'm trying to even do this uh, is because I want to power up my weapons to plus 30, plus 30. Then I actually get to keep the weapon outside, and I'm actually aiming for the Scholar book. Alright, so uh, let's uh, throw out... Um, let's see, increase the number of treasure coffers. Yeah, let's throw out the flight so we can decrease the number of enemies on the, on the next floor. And I know that's not the best thing to do, but I want to add a challenge. We don't need all that experience. I think we should be okay. So I'm gonna go to the final floor, well, the final level. Oh, we got another max HP. We actually didn't get any uh, negative uh, debuffs in this tier. That's awesome. Usually it at least gives you one. Oh, another strength we can use. The pomegranate of strength. The pomegranate. All right, so let's go this way. All right, so I'm gonna take out, let's take out the Yarzon first, because I think that that's more likely to move around. And I definitely don't want to deal with the Hornet and the Yarzon at the same time. 
Aeos isn't really doing much, but still. Well, see, the fairies can't actually, they can't actually attack, they can only heal. Which is why uh, it's good if you just uh, leave all the DPS into yourself. And just let the fairies, uh, let, let the fairy heal you for like the first 30 or so levels. And once you hit level 30, you have to start worrying about yourself a little bit more. But it's nice, your summon can pretty much be your own healer. And you can just be a DPS class as a healer, which is so cool. Alright, so we could move on. I want to get a little bit more experience here. Um, I should probably throw out that site as well. Let's throw out that site so you can see the map. I don't really care about seeing the map, I care about seeing the, the traps. And if we use the safety, it'll actually remove all the traps on the floor, which is another uh, good thing to do if you're really worried that you're not going to be able to uh, survive through them if you're like, you know, uh, somehow um, colorblind or something. Because it does blend in with the floor really easily, actually. Because the floor is sort of like this beige-ish color. So yeah, I'm going to use that Pullmander of Safety. And boom, all the traps are gone. And we got 30 minutes to complete this floor. I think we're, we're going to be okay, though. Let's pop that sprint. And uh, once we get to the final floor, I'm going to use that Pullmander. I think, do I have a Pullmander of Lust? I thought I did. All right, I guess I only have Witching. If we had a Pullmander of Lust, uh, we could turn into a Succubus and deal a huge amount of damage to the boss, but I think we're going to have to do this the regular way. Unless one of these happens to have... Oh, a Pullmander of Lust. Awesome. Nice little bit of serendipity there. Uh, actually, I think we're, we're good to... Uh, I, want, I want that experience. I want to be level 20. We're level 19, like, one-third right now. So I think if we just focus on killing these last few things, we'll definitely reach it. Uh, the boss will give experience as well, so it's totally a, a way to level up as well. There we go. Let's get that palace beetle. Man, it is so hot in this room. I'm recording right now. I have to turn off the AC, so uh, the, uh, the, the microphone doesn't pick up the AC. I can literally feel sweat running down my leg. It is disgusting. All right. Oh, we got. Oh, it's another Palmander of Strength. I actually wonder, like, if I use that again, will it like add up? Yeah, it goes up to seven and eight minutes. So I guess the uh, amount of damage does stack. That's interesting. I'm sorry, not the amount of damage, but like how long it stays. Because we'll have that. We'll have that buff for the next seven minutes. That's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and uh, kill this boss and be done with the first tier. And then, uh, yeah, I'm planning on updating this thing every week. So next week I'll do the uh, second tier. I'll do. Um, uh, floors 20, or I'm sorry, 11 to 20. So here we have the Palace Death Gaze. Death Gaze is a classic Final Fantasy enemy. Uh, I think the best appearance it had was in uh, Final Fantasy. T well, I mean, probably, maybe not the best, but the one I, I remember the most is in Final Fantasy 12. Uh, you fight him on top of the airship, and it's so cool because like that's the only fight you can ever have on an airship in that game. Oh boy, uh, I should probably heal. Yeah, and it, it was such an iconic fight because that hunt like, was so hyped by all the NPCs around you, and, you know, you had to go through all these hoops to, like, find the right NPCs and, like, prove that it actually existed with this kid. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a really cool side quest. I can't wait to do that again in, uh, the, in the, the HD remaster. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to be playing that when it comes out. So, yeah, Arrow Blast, uh, it does deal raid-wide AoE damage. Not really anything you can do about it. Oh, I actually have that Pullmander of Lust. I should use that now. Um, so, yeah, that'll transform us into a Succubus. And we can just uh, start casting... Uh, oh, let's move out of the way here. We can just start casting Void Fire 2. And that does a potency of 500 damage. And see how much damage that does to its health? That is insane. 300 damage at this level is really good. So, boom. And you can just keep spamming it. Just make sure that you dodge its own... Eight, the, the AoEs that it likes to send at you. And I think we have this for like, what, like 40 seconds? We, we have it for 30 seconds more. So yeah, this is really a great way to just totally cheese this boss in a way. Otherwise you could like, you know, still keep up your dots and fight them the normal way, but uh, if you were a DPS, you probably have to resort to uh, using potions and stuff like that. Because you have no way to heal apart from like second wind. Boom. Yeah, the bombination. Cool. Oh, not. Oh, Alright, one more, one more. There we go. Alright, and we turn back just in time. So that levels up. That levels us up to 20, just as I wanted. And we get Maven Mend. I actually don't know what that does. I'm gonna go check that out. Uh, we also get Ether Dam too, so we can stack two Ether Flow stacks. And Maven Mend 
Increases the base action uh, damage, HP, and HP restoration by 10%. Okay, so yeah, it's basically uh, you're stronger by 10% in everything that you do. So anyway, in uh, the next video, which I will uh, probably record tomorrow, but put up next week, um, so I can use a save file more. Uh, we will uh, continue on into the Palace of the Dead, and it's definitely going to get more challenging as we go on. This first floor, like, we pretty much just had to keep ourselves alive, but uh, it's definitely going to get really frightening once we start having, like, tons more traps, and, like, uh, there's some debuffs on the floors which prevent us from using any skills, except for global cooldown skills, and that can be really scary. Actually, I left Cleric Stance on at one point as I was doing that, and I couldn't turn it off, and we almost died. I'm, that was the party of four, so... Doing this solo is definitely going to be interesting. Alright, anyway, uh, that's all for me today. Uh, if you like this part, rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, definitely go check out Double XP now that I'll, I'll leave a little link right there in, in the video with the annotation. You can go check that out. Uh, we don't have anything uh, Final Fantasy XIV related on there, but we do have some Kingdom Hearts uh, discussion, and we're playing Paper Mario and Moon Hunters, which are some games that you might enjoy checking out. So anyway, uh, I will see you in the next video whenever I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.